The White House is renewing its demand for Congress to lift the debt ceiling without conditions as the nation could default on its debt in less than a month. Since January, the government's been deploying extraordinary measures to pay its bills. But the money could run out as early as June 1st, according to an estimate by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. That puts Washington on high alert to avoid a dangerous and unprecedented default. Following all of this are our White House correspondent Laura Barone Lopez and congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins. Good to see you both. Thanks for being here. Good to be here. All right, Laura, let's start with this. The president has said he's not going to negotiate. But yesterday, the White House called the four congressional leaders, invited them to a meeting at the White House on May 9th. What is that about? Are they changing strategy here? In the near term, no, they're not changing strategy. The president's position is still the same. And White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre made this clear during her briefing today. He's going to make it very clear uh, in this meeting that they're going to have next week how it is the Congress's constitutional duty to act. That he is not going to negotiate on the debt ceiling. Been very clear. That is not going to change. Now, Corrine, as well as other White House officials I've spoken to, say that the president in that meeting is going to say that they need to avoid a deep default and that there cannot be any conditions attached to that. So again, the message still the same, but also they are going to talk about initiating this separate process to address the budget, to address appropriations. Why now? Be they say because they finally saw somewhat of what Re House Republicans want in that bill that they passed last week. So Lisa, he's going to have to work with Republicans mm -hmm. on this. Where are they? right now, especially Speaker McCarthy. It's going to be a test, as it has been, I think, in the last few weeks for House Republicans. Right now, they also are not changing their strategy. I will report that we know Speaker McCarthy and also Republican Leader McConnell do plan to go to that meeting on May 9th. They will both be there. Um, but House Republicans insist they will not back a clean, so-called clean debt ceiling bill. That's the only thing the president says he will accept. Hence our major problem here. In addition to that, Amna, we have some very particular dynamics in the House of Representatives. Our viewers are familiar with some of these. I want to look at what we're facing. Here in the House of Representatives, Speaker McCarthy has just a four-vote majority. In addition, as part of the deal to become Speaker, he agreed to a rule that allows any member to force a vote on his own uh, removal. So in other words, a clean debt bill, should it come down to it, if McCarthy even feels that's the right thing to do, politically would be suicide for him. So McCarthy needs something here to appease his base. On the one hand, one piece of, I think, pragmatic good news from Republicans is I don't hear any Republicans saying, what's the big deal? We're not worried about the debt ceiling. They say they are worried about it. They don't want to risk default. On the other hand, their base is fired up about what they see is just a tidal wave of red ink, and they think this is a do-or-die moment to try and get spending cuts. Laura, there's reason to be worried, right? Mm -hmm. That deadline is coming nearer. But we've, we've come close before. There have been debt limit standoffs before. We all remember the 2011 fiscal cliff. How are those past experiences driving the White House approach today? It's entirely the foundation of the White House approach, Amna, because the president was a key player there, if you'll remember. So uh, since President Biden took office in 2021, he's had the same line, no negotiation, uh, over the debt limit increases, tied to spending cuts, he won't do it. In 2011, then President Obama started off negotiating with then Speaker John Boehner about about spending cuts, about tax increases. They couldn't come to an agreement, and so ultimately the two people that hammered it out was then Vice President Biden and then Minority Leader McConnell in the Senate. And ultimately, those two people came away with very different lessons from 2011. McConnell said then that uh, his lesson was that you could use the debt limit to uh, ransom, use it as ransom, and take it as a hostage to get ultimate spending cuts that they want. That that was something he thought that Republicans could ultimately do again. President Biden's lesson was very different. He and then President Obama walked away from that saying, no, we can never negotiate again over clean increases to the debt limit. And all of the advisors that, uh, or allies close to the White House, inside the White House, people outside the White House that I speak to, say that's something that's been driving the president since he took office. So Lisa, we talk a lot about where the president is, where House Republicans are. What about Democrats on Capitol Hill? What's well, the role for them? You know, they rule in the Senate, but truly what we've seen from Democrats and Republicans is acknowledgement that this really is not in the Senate's wheelhouse altogether. I want to play something we heard from Senator Mitch McConnell today, the House, the Senate Republican leader. It should be clear to the administration that the Senate 
is not a relevant player this time. They have got to have a measure that can pass the House. How does it pass the House? It has to have the support of the Speaker, and I'm behind the Speaker. One thing that is happening in the Senate and also in the House are some backup plans, and we're going to be doing more reporting on, on days to come. There are some Democrats talking about a, maybe a discharge petition in the House. That's complicated. We will come back to that. There are bills being filed in sort of worst-case scenarios, but there's just not clear that they have the votes in either chamber. Or we can't stress this enough. What's at stake here? Not just of default, but even coming close. Coming close, there are significant economic consequences. We saw that the credit rating can be impacted the way it was in 2011. But if we go over the cliff and there is a debt default, the consequences are these. At least one million jobs lost, a possible recession, the country's credit rating would tank, again, as well as interest rates going up, likely cuts to Medicare and Social Security benefits, and military paychecks delayed. And the longer the default is, the more jobs lost, up to as many as 7 million. And from the White House perspective, Amna, President Biden feels as though he may have a little bit of leverage here, because even though McConnell said that this this is ultimately solved by a deal between President Biden and Speaker McCarthy. The White House knows that this ultimately isn't actually solved until Speaker McCarthy can get the votes on the floor of the House and convince his Republicans to go along with any deal they come up with. Lisa, walk us through what comes next. Okay, here we go. We've got that May 9th meeting, but, uh, you know, we think we have a lot of time till June 1st. No, not really, because the truth is June 1st, May 9th meeting, after that, that's when we start talks. How about this? The U.S. Senate is scheduled to recess on May 19th. So in Congress time, we really just have a couple of weeks. And I will tell you something that I'm watching for. Even some Republicans told me today on the Hill that they may be interested in sort of a temporary extension, 30-day extension of the debt ceiling. Who knows? We've seen this play before, but that's something that is in the air right now. Congress time, very different, as we know. Laura, while I have you here, I need to ask you about another situation. I know you've been tracking on the U.S. southern border. Title 42, which you talked about a lot, set to lift very soon. The administration is preparing for what will surely be an increase of people coming, and they've announced some new measures today. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that? So the Department of Homeland Security requested that uh, an additional number of troops be sent down to the southern border by the Defense Department. This announcement would be 15 1,500 military troops sent to the border, arriving May 10th for at least 90 days. Their tasks, though, Amna, are going to be data entry, warehouse work, administrative aid, and that is in addition to the 2,500 National Guard troops already there. And the White House stressed today that these uh, troops will not be interacting with migrants at all, and that ultimately the reason that they're having to do this is because uh, they expect more migrants to head to the border with the lifting of Title 42. Another huge story. We'll be following ahead. Laura Brown Lopez, Lisa Desjardins, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.